guys, and welcome to another episode of Karks Drift Racing 2 with Brogue Hammer Auto House. Today's episode is all about the Spectre RS, aka the Nissan S15 in real life, and we have a nice little livery on here, as well as the Pro Drift 3 Tune. Um, this one is still on the stock motor, no engine swaps or anything like that. Um, I did unlock an engine swap for it, and we will talk about that um, a little later on in the video when I go through the tuning stuff. Um, I wanted to show you guys just a couple clips of driving the car around. Um, coming up here was a spot that I used for the three-wheel motion screenshot there right off the bat. Nice little slow-mo. And uh, it's really fun. This specific hill is if you go to the training map, you can pretty much just open world kind of discover. And I um, wanted to show you guys some drift clips and whatnot. And then we'll jump in. I'll show you all the tuning details and everything as well. Um, as always, I uh, appreciate if you liked the video. We did officially make a video that got a thousand views in the first 24 hours, which for me is a a nice little milestone. Um, I've been pushing for that for a while and it just hasn't quite happened yet. So um, yesterday's top five drifts video actually hit a thousand views in the first 24 hours. So thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Okay, now we're going to jump into the details on the Spectre RS here. So um, there's a lot of different body kits and tuning ability that you can have with this car. I currently run the R&T body kit with a different front bumper, um, but the stock kit obviously is a stock car. The slide performance kit also looks really nice in my opinion. Um, I almost got that one instead. I may end up doing that again. Um, the missile kit uh, is kind of like a somewhat of a rocket bunny kit and it looks okay. CBW is pretty plain looking in my opinion. Um, and then the R&T, which I really liked because of those front fender flares. And um, like I said, I did change the front bumper out of that. So they also do have the D-Master kit, which uh, is a really nice looking Rocket Bunny kit. And uh, it's just 45 gold for a body kit. Doesn't seem worth it to me. I'd rather spend that money on some uh, engine upgrades and that kind of stuff. The Pro Flow kit looks really nice as well. But uh, like I said, I just really prefer the... Uh, other kit and even though you select a kit you can still go into the parts tab here and select a different front bumper um, you know I the R&T bumper in my opinion was just a little too aggressive so I went back to um, the CBW front bumper but uh, if you guys didn't know even though you select a body kit you can still go back and change the bumpers the side skirts the tail lights the lights the you know the exhaust tip um, and everything there as well so uh, just in case any of you guys are wondering just wanted to clear that up I do have this upgraded to a Pro Drift 3, and I did unlock the 3.8 liter V6 twin turbo, but for some reason, the way it drove with that engine swap, it had a lot of turbo lag, and um, I just really didn't like how it performed. So um, anyways, this is the stock engine. We're gonna jump into it and uh, show you guys some tuning here. So as you can see, uh, my spring sizes are at uh, 8.3 centimeters, uh, stiffness is at 100. Uh, sway bar is kind of in the middle. I tend to run that really stiff in the front end, but on this one I just have it at uh, kind of the half uh, length there at 81. And then a little bit of positive wheel toe in the front, negative 5.9 degrees of camber. I do have the caster locked all the way out at 11 and Ackerman at 70%. Um, some of you guys have asked if, you know, certain adjustments and whatnot, and I would say Ackerman, um, it says a high value increase drifting high value increases drifting speed at large drift angles so basically the higher that Ackerman is the more drift speed you're going to be able to maintain but the front end is going to feel a lot more loose and not quite as responsive in the steering so it's kind of a fine line of if you want more steering more input you will lower the Ackerman level and if you want you know the opposite where you want faster drift and less reaction you can make that Ackerman higher um, negative one camber in the rear a uh, little bit of positive toe in the rear as well. Almost no sway bar, just 20. Um, and then the stif stiffness in the rear is almost identical to the front at 99 and uh, 8 centimeters of spring size. I am running 19 280 or 265 30s in the front, but in the rear, I do have a 19 285 with a 35% profile. Now that's more important because um, in the rear, I wanted a little bit more side bite. So that higher sidewall is going to give that to me. Um, the rev and everything on the engine is maxed out. The differential locking coefficient is at a 0.48 with a 4.0 overall gear ratio. And then I did go down and adjust um, fourth and fifth gear to a 120 and a 1.03. And obviously the gear shifting delay at the minimum because you don't really want to delay when you're shifting. I don't know why 
you would, but maybe it helps some people. Let me know in the comments below if you like a shifting delay. Uh, the axis widths are more so for fitment. Um, in this particular case, uh, the front is kind of poked out and the rear is reduced. But that's going to do it for the S15 Spectre RS tune video for today. Thank you guys for watching. As always, stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Thank you.